Thanks for tuning in to Healthy Planet One, where we discuss healthy living from experts in each of their fields. This is your host, Patricia Starr. And your co-host, Kimberly Knock. Welcome, everyone. Today's guest on Healthy Planet One is Dr. Mitch again. And today we're going to be talking about an exciting topic, which he is rightfully the expert in the latest IV and oral nutrition, as well as disease mitigation. Now, hold on, because he's got a very um, in-depth bio that I want to make sure that, and some of you may have already uh, heard of Dr. Mitch. He's uh, got over 40 years experience, anti-aging, holistic, and integrative health. He's got a fierce commitment to education excellence. He's an author. He's a host of both TV and radio and international lecturer. He's hosted the largest health talk program in South Florida, Dr. Mitch, the Dr. Mitch um, show for seven and a half years. He's a medical expert on the uh, Dean, the Andy Dean show, America Now, and he's currently the host of the largest health TV show in South Carolina, North Carolina, and parts of North Georgia. So hold on, he is a co-author of four textbooks, <laughs> and according to the president of the American Academy for Anti-Aging, Dr. Mitch is considered one of the top 10 anti-aging physicians and consultants in the world. We are so thrilled to have you, Dr. Mitch. So how are you today? And thank you for joining us. Oh my gosh, I'm looking around to see who you're talking about. That's really <laughs> nice. You know, it's great to have you with us. <laughs> uh, this is yeah, wonderful. Yeah, you've wonderful. taken such great care of my friend um, for the last eight years. So I've known you for quite a while. Um, and that's just fantastic. So tell us how this kind of all started for you. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm going to go back to the beginning. It's actually a true story. You know, when I was in medical school, uh, basically, integrative medicine wasn't a word, number one. Uh, the vitamin concept really wasn't real. As a matter of fact, in my very first year in physiology, they made us do an experiment where we took some vitamin C. First, we collected our urine. This was a lab. We took some vitamin C, and then an hour later, we re-looked at the vitamin C in the urine. They see, see, you just lost all of this, so it's all a waste to take these vitamins. So in, in, in medical school, pretty much they were uh, trying to drive to us, well, vitamins, minerals didn't make that much sense unless you had some disease like scurvy, of course, where then you need a little bit of vitamin C. <laughs> but, it, but all that, it changed for me, uh, Kimberly and Patricia. What happened was when I was a chief intern at a hospital here in Florida, I watched a group of people for the same exact disorder get out of the hospital three to five days faster in one particular group of internists compared to all the rest. And what was the difference? I said to myself, you know, I was the chief burn town. I was looking, I said, there must be a reason. The only reason was that they were using already at that time intravenously 50,000 milligrams of vitamin C. And I said, hmm, there must be something to this that I was not taught. As a matter of fact, I was actually taught quite the opposite, as I told you. So I said, yeah, there must be something different. And so me being inquisitive and, and one of these people that you can't, someone else can't give you the information, go figure it out for yourself. And that's what I did. I started my trek through, you know, learning about it, you know, becoming, a, getting a master's, getting a PhD as a physician. And then, of course, incorporating the real concept of mind, body and spirit into medicine. It really is a real thing once you're educated. So that's how it all started for me. Wow, that's quite a story. That's wonderful. Okay. Was yeah. that 50,000 grams a day that you, they were doing IV? Yes, it actually was. It was actually uh, not 50,000 grams, 50,000 milligrams or 50 grams, yeah. which in right. itself is a, is, a, is a very large dose, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, but when given properly, diluted properly, the body accepts it very well. And, and I always thought, again, like I was taught in medical school, oh, well, what good is that? All it's going to do is you heard people say that's going to just make expensive pee. And, I, and back then, I probably would have said the same thing. But then I realized that the white blood cells, pretty much uh, the brain, all pretty much every part of the body without the incorporation of vitamin C into these cells would not produce nor do their work properly. So the slow introduction, maybe the half-life of vitamin C intravenously is only 30 minutes, but 
the physiological uh, length is over three weeks. So then I realized something was quite different. These people were getting well, and there was more to this integrative medicine approach than just, and I'm you know, curious, hey, it's expensive. When, when was that? I was curious what year that was because um, I learned eight years ago about vitamin C IVs on a, on a Care for Cause Cancer Summit, and we were blown away. Yeah, well, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty neat. But this, are you ready for this? But it gives away my age, and since we're not, oh, live, it's okay. But, I, but no, no, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind because I've been doing this forty years. This is literally forty-one years ago. Wow. When this, so you can imagine how that was at that time. Like, ah. well, in a hospital, it's not even hospitals now. So you can imagine to my like, oh my gosh you know, how that meant for me as a young doctor to see this and see a difference. And the truth is, it, it just basically took me to a place where I could say, there is other things. It's not just about the if-then model. And that's how all medicines really built the allopathic regular medicine model. If you get something, then we'll do something about it. That doesn't work. We have to be proactive and we have to be preventative. Excellent, excellent. And wow. how did you launch your training and interest in integrative medicine? Because I, I actually went to a Scripps. Uh, uh, they were certifying uh, physicians from all over the world as integrative doctors in their field. Um, that was over in St. Pete uh, probably seven years ago. So how did the integrative side start for you in your training? Well, it, the minute I just saw that, um, you know, what was happening, I realized that it was time for me to begin my trek. And so, you know, I, I first, as the uh, chief intern, I, I sponged off the doctors that were already doing it and learned a lot during the year, you know, being in a hospital 36 hours on and one day off. Um, and then it was a matter, I pretty much, I read almost every book that was out there. And then it all grew from there. Then I did, you know, I, and eventually I did a PhD in nutrition and psychonormunology, uh, which took me to the next level. I started the very first hospital at Miami Heart, a uh, hospital in the world that did integrative medicine. There was a whole department. We had 37 people working uh, with us and, and doing this kind of medicine. And then, of course, I started uh, writing textbooks and, and then lecturing all over. And, and just one thing built into the next. And that's how we how I developed. There's still no absolute certifying body in integrative medicine. People come up and say, okay, we want to certify. So they make a course. But the truth is there's no nothing that's considered, you know, uh, that is considered like a, that you have a, a degree in surgery or something like that. But that's how mine started. It's been literally a learning experience over 40 years and now it's turned into more of a teaching experience which i'm doing now helping doctors learn how to put this medicine into their own practices at whatever particular level their comfortable factor is and believe it or not most doctors are now starting to look at integrative medicine much more seriously than ever before mm -hmm. so how has it changed what are some of the, the biggest changes that you've seen in the last um, well, the, the biggest change, of course, um, you know, it, it's in several areas. The very first change, in, uh, and I hate to say that, is a monetary change. You know, the doctors are saying, oh, my gosh, they're not making as much as they used to. And here's a practice that maybe we can add something to. I hate to say that, but, uh, yes, that, that is true. Um, the, second, the second thing is an educational. Uh, we finally realized, like, for example, let's take an example of uh, something like uh, vitamin D. Vitamin D, you know, was 40, 50 years ago was the vitamin that prevented rickets um, and kept calcium in bone. And that was all it was. Now we've reclassified vitamin D and there are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of articles written only in the past five years on that now reclassified as a hormone and that um, vitamin, C, vitamin D actually um, uh, stops everything from depression, it, it, it decreases cancer risk, it certainly helps you mend better and quicker, and of course, if you want to have the best viral insurance policy, vitamin D is. I think you have a question for me. <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you, Dr. Mitch. I'm, I'm fascinated. Uh, for, I actually have a couple questions. When did the, um, when did the integrated healing um, part of medicine really start to take hold. What year was that? Where you well, really for me, I, you know, for me, it's been so long. Um, 
I think in the, I would say in the last uh, 10 years, uh -huh. you're seeing uh, the shift or the paradigm shift begin. Um, the actual real shifts now probably within the past couple of years, you know, it, doctors may not embrace it, um, but they're, they're more likely not to say, hey, um, you know, this is, you know, this is not true or this is not real because the science uh, is much greater. For example, vitamin C in PubMed has 30,000 plus, you know, references. So it's even more reference than any drug. And, you know, at this point in time, you know, I have more than 450 physicians that see me as their private doctor. So I know the shift is changing. And when someone gets something that's quite chronic or they're quite ill, you know, and there is nothing in the conventional side of things, they begin to say, hey, Mitch, what can I do? And I get that at least four or five times a month from physicians as well. So that's I awesome. think it, it's now. So yeah. the other question that I have is, um, you know, you're you're really training doctors to, to uh, embrace this IV sort of treatment. Um, how pervasive, number one, how pervasive is that? And then is that something that people should look at getting uh, on a regular basis? And if so, what does that look like? Let me answer uh, pretty much the uh, latter before the former part of the question. The answer is um, the reason you would get IV therapy is because on the best day of your life, when you have no medication, you're 18 to 32 years old, <clears throat> the amount of vitamins that you'll absorb by taking orally at the best case scenario is 30, maybe 40% of that vitamin. So if it says 200 milligrams of something on the bottle, you may absorb 100 milligrams. But as life goes on, the GI uh, tract doesn't work as well. Uh, other, new, other vitamins or even other medicines enter the picture. You get older, you don't make as much acid in the stomach. That number goes down as low as less than 5%. Oh, so wow. when, when IV is 100% delivery, it makes not only sense, but it, it makes it an integral component of whatever nutritional program that you're in, introducing to the patient. The other thing is to answer about do should everyone do it, they shouldn't just do it by going to like an IV bar and picking out a name product. I'm very against that. Oh, I'll have a, a support for hangover. I'll have one of those. <laughs> most, well... The truth is most of those are pretty much worthless. They actually could do sometimes more harm than good. Wow. And the real way of doing this is to try to develop that person's biochemistry without a really comprehensive uh, wellness profile, so to speak. How in the world would you know what someone needs? No different than you'd go into the pharmacy and say, oh, yeah, I'll pick up that chemotherapy or well, let me have that for my for autoimmune disease. You know, you really needs to be looked at with a real good diagnostic acumen and put it together for that patient. Basically, these programs should be individualized and help. And, and, and to answer the first part of your question, I think there are more and more picking up in this. However, it's often picked up on a the basis that we were talking about before. Oh, I'll open like an IV bar. Uh, I'll do just the wellness component. So to really find uh, someone who's really steeped in doing the medicine properly and looking into it, there are some, and it's growing, but the number's still not huge because it's a whole field. And when people ask me, well, why is that? I said, well, it's like anything else. If you wanted to be an anesthesiologist, you go to school for three years to learn how to put people asleep safely and wake them up safely. It's right. no different than this. There are thousands and thousands of articles and things that you need to learn. So it's a learning process. And we try to teach doctors. We have a program that we teach doctors over a year, et cetera. So it's, it's a very good way of becoming a complete physician in my mind. So the, the question is, how do you find a complete physician in this way? Because uh, I know for myself that I've used IV therapy um, when there's, I know something's coming on and I want to stop it. So I, I worked with a, with a um, functional medicine uh, holistic doctor who did IVs, and I said, I think I'm coming down with the flu, and I need to get an IV, and he put together his cocktail, and, and he was at my physician, so boom, um, within an hour, I was, I was absolutely fine, totally clear. Right, so to find the right person, there is no direct answer to that, because there's, there's nothing, there's no conformity to the, uh, basically, to the teaching or the education of these doctors, so the questions would be, you know, where did you learn how to do IV if you're looking for an IV doctor? Uh, how long did you train? How many have you done? 
um, who, what degrees do you have? Do you have the 